Hello everyone. I am Professor Jayashree Prem Kumar and I am your instructor for Unit 8 which is on Objectives of Communication. As you all must have learned from the previous lectures on communication, the success of any business organization depends on how well it can communicate internally and externally. And when we say success, for any business organization, its success is synonymous to its profit margin, right? So in order to achieve this primary aim, that is to make profit through effective communication, each organization sets itself certain definite objectives, which as you can see on your screen are information, advice and counseling, persuasion, education and training, raising morale, warning, motivation and order and instruction. During the course of our sessions, including this session, we will take each of these objectives in detail to understand their significance in a business organization. Uh, so let us begin with our first objective which as you can see on your screen is information. When it comes to business organization, information refers to knowledge. And when I say knowledge, that knowledge means knowledge of everything that is relevant to the organization. Generally, the five primary types of information or knowledge, as you can see on your screen, play a key role in any business organization in order for it to function smoothly. Uh, let us discuss each of these uh, types of information to understand the relevance of these types for the business. So the first one is environmental information, which is basically information pertaining to the geography, climate, and political and social conditions of a place before setting up of any business. External information which pertains to information about sources of credit, availability of raw material, rules and regulations of government which is vital for any business organization uh, to function it smoothly. Next is internal information which pertains to information about strong and weak points of an organization regarding capital, uh, its capital, its products, its sale capacity, its degree of training of workers and their efficiency. Next is competitive information which refers to information about strong and weak points of the rival companies and the past and uh, present performances and the last is new development information which is about the latest research in technology, upgradation of products etc. which again plays a vital role in any business organization. Now the next step is how a business can acquire this information right. In uh, today's information overloaded world this question seems to be irrelevant and yet is crucial because the organization needs to ensure that the acquired information is from a reliable source. It is recent and also it is complete. So how can a business person collect information which is reliable, recent and also complete? Uh, generally acquiring information in an organization is done through newspapers, TV, internet, uh, active listening, keen observation, uh, recording the conferences, uh, then uh, the trade fairs, magazines, etc. Just as the organization receives information, it also has to provide it to its employees as well as to outside world, right? Thus, as you can see on your screen, supplying of information needs to be done within as well as outside the organization. Uh, the organization can provide this information to its employees by way of notice board, 
in-house newsletters, emails, etc. Similarly, the organization can give information to its consumers about the progress and profit of its business via seminars, conferences, and advertisements in media. Now, one important thing or one important point related to information is that while passing on the information, one needs to remember that information should be not too lengthy. It should be clear, complete and easy to grasp because too lengthy information and too complicated information could lead to confusion as well as miscommunication. So, you must have noticed now that in a business organization, information or knowledge plays a vital role and thus it is considered to be one of the important objectives which can make an organization uh, function smoothly. So, now we will come to the next objective which is equally important and which uh, as you can see on the screen is motivation. Motivation in simple words is the inner state or inner drive which activates or energizes a person to achieve their goal. When workers are motivated, they work willingly, right? And they work even without any supervision. The best motivation for any employee without any doubt is giving them good salary, right? However, Besides wages, there are certain motivational factors which are equally important and uh, it was Abraham Maslow, an eminent psychologist who first proposed model of hierarchy of needs for motivation which uh, as you can see on your screen shows the different motivating factors. We will take uh, each of uh, these to know what they mean as per Maslow's hierarchy uh, of needs. So, the first in the hierarchical model is physiological needs which include need for food, uh, clothing and shelter which as we all are aware are our basic needs and uh, they stand first in the hierarchical model. Uh, next comes social needs which include need for attention and affectionate relationship with the colleagues and respectable place in the organization. Next in the hierarchical model is esteem needs which include a desire for self-respect, for achievement and esteem or recognition from others and the last one which is equally important is self-actualization needs which include uh, desire for self-fulfillment, for realization of one's potential or capacity and self-development. It is uh, clear from Maslow's uh, theory or Maslow's hierarchy of needs that as a person climbs up the ladder, his or her needs change and become complex. The test for management is how to get optimum performance from the workers. Uh, as performance is directly related to motivation motive and uh, uh, knowledge and the ability of employees, if there are more disincentives, the result will be low motivation. And the task of management is to keep its employees constantly motivated to get their best performance. Uh, let us have a look at one uh, example to understand how motivation as an objective works in an organization. Okay, so all of you must have heard of Starbucks which now is undoubtedly one of the fastest growing company in global market, right? But do you know that Starbucks is also considered to be an outstanding business model because of its low uh, employee turnover rate? and its exceedingly high performance, a feature that has attracted attention of the entire business world. Uh, the chief executive officer of Starbucks Corporation, 
Howard Skulls considers that the reason for success of Starbucks is not coffee but employees. And uh, this clearly indicates that Starbucks strategy to achieve its chief objectives, that is profit, is by way of motivation. This is opposite to the principles of classical management, which is only concerned about production and ignores workers' ideas. Now, laborers are not machines, right? And cannot always do the same task with equal passion. Charles firmly believes that the spirit of Starbucks is employees and feels honored about the value of Starbucks employees. Starbucks offers an interactive structure that makes personnel throw themselves into their job. Uh, so with this example, now we'll conclude our today's video lecture. But before concluding, let us recap what we did in this video lecture. We began our discussion with the uh, important objectives of communication, which are uh, designed to ensure smooth functioning of the business organization and which get reflected in its profit making capability. Uh, there are total eight important objectives which uh, help the organization to achieve this aim. And uh, during this lecture, we discuss information and motivation, the two of these important objectives, right? We'll uh, continue our discussion on other important objectives in the next lecture. Thank you for your attention. Namaste.